Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, Letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing And the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really It was a special day for Pat, but he was keeping it a secret. Now then, Jess, don't you give my secret away. Mrs. Goggins was looking out for Pat. She was very pleased about something. Hello, Pat, she said. There's a lot of post today. Pat didn't look too happy until he saw that most of it was for him. But who could be writing to Pat? One envelope had a drawing of a cat on it, and the writing looked very much like Katie Pottage's. Why don't you open them? Then you'll know who sent them. So Pat did. What a surprise. They were all birthday cards. He stood them in a row along the counter. There was one from every person on his round. That was nice. But how did everyone know it was his birthday today? He'd kept it a secret all these years, and now they all knew. Funny. How on earth they found out, I couldn't say. But let me wish you a happy birthday too, and many happy returns. Pat bought six chocolate kittens. Then gathered up all his cards and letters and went on his way. Greendale Farm, the twins were looking out for Pat. Happy birthday, Pat, they said as he came in with the post. Mm, thank you. Mrs. Pottage had just come in from the kitchen. Happy birthday, she said. Pat showed the twins his cards. We've made you a cake. How did you know it was my birthday? Said Pat. We're not telling, said Mrs. Pottage. It's a secret. <laughs> it was a secret, said Pat with a laugh. Here's a sugar mouse for Jess, said Tom. Thank you very much. Now let me see. Have I got everything? Cake, mouse, cards.
Goodbye. Jess spotted the mouse. He thought he'd catch it before it got lost. No, said Pat. Save it for tea time. It won't run away. But Jess wasn't so sure. Hello, Reverend. A letter for you. Oh, thank you. Mm, been expecting this. And here's something for you to greet you on your birthday. Thank you, said Pat. It was a leather-bound Bible. Oh, thank you. But how did you know? He who reads shall learn. Very kind of you. Goodbye. Godspeed. There were some letters for Thompson Ground. Come in. Pat arrived just in time for a cup of tea. Thank you. Oh, your letter. Alf Thompson came in. Hello, Pat, he said. Happy birthday. He gave him a walking stick with a handle made from a sheep's horn. He'd made it himself. That'll be good for keeping dogs off. Thanks, said Pat. But how did you know it was my birthday? Oh, you'll have to find that out for yourself. Just keep your eyes open, said Alf, smiling. You're quite a famous postman, you know. Whatever does he mean, thought Pat. He was getting more and more puzzled, and his van was filling up with presents. <laughs> Jess didn't like the stick. He thought the horn might butt him when he wasn't looking. Granny Dryden was busy cooking when Pat arrived with the letters. He'd brought her groceries too, as the mobile shop couldn't get up the lane to her cottage. Morning! Post! Granny Dryden had knitted something for Pat's birthday. Whatever was it? A woolly vest. It'll keep you warm in the winter, said Granny Dryden. <laughs> it looked very itchy. But Pat said, thank you, it's, it's just the right size. How did you know it was my birthday? Eh? I can't hear a word you say, said Granny Dryden. I need a new battery in my hearing aid. Uh, I'll bring you one tomorrow, said Pat. Goodbye. At Miss Hubbard's cottage, there was a glass of fruit juice waiting for Pat. There were two letters for her. Miss Hubbard drank his health and wished him a happy birthday. Cheers. 
She gave him a steering wheel cover made of red velvet. Thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> she didn't tell him how she knew it was his birthday. Goodbye. <laughs> At Intake Farm, George Lancaster showed Pat his special prize hens. They look champion, said Pat. They are, they're champion layers, said George. Just look at that. He gave him two dozen for his birthday and a dozen for the village school. Thanks for the eggs, George. Then Sam Waldron arrived and gave Pat a punnet of strawberries and a carton of double cream for his birthday tea. Thank you, Sam. Lucy was on the lookout for Pat at the village school. The children had made a picture of him on a big sheet of card with Happy Birthday written underneath and all their names. They'd also made a model of his van, but they wouldn't tell him how they knew it was his birthday. Pat had presents for them, a chocolate kitten each, and the eggs from George Lancaster. Goodbye. The day's round was nearly finished. Pat was just looking to see if there were any letters to collect when Peter Fogg came along on his tractor. He stopped to wish Pat a happy birthday. Pat told him how everyone seemed to know about it. <laughs> Don't you know why? said Peter Fogg, laughing. I wish I did, said Pat. Peter showed him a newspaper. It was this week's Pencaster Gazette. Have a look at this, he said. Pat was amazed. There was an article about him, headed Postman of the Year. It told all about his work, how he helped everyone, where he was born, and the date of his birthday. Well, said Pat, how did they find all that out? Keep it as a souvenir, said Peter. Thanks, said Pat. I'll show it to the wife. <laughs> she will be pleased. All right, Jess, I'm coming. I know it's been a long day, but we're off home now. It's a pity no one knows when it's your birthday, Jess. Never mind, we'll have a little party tonight. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, boom, boom. Black and white cat. Early in the morning, 
Just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Greendale was having a hard winter, and there'd been another snowfall in the night. It was icy as well. Postman Pat was out on his rounds as usual, but he had to go very carefully. Sam Waldron was out too, with his mobile shop. Hello, Pat. Rough weather. Hello, Sam. How's it going? Well, I don't think I'll be able to get this van up to Granny Dryden's with the groceries. I'll take them with the letters, said Pat. Righto. Here they are. That'll keep her going for a while. Thanks, Pat. Mind how you go. Cheerio. And Pat was on his way. He skidded and slithered along the steep road to Granny Dryden's house. She was glad to see him, especially when she saw he had a groceries as well as a letter. Good morning! Oh, thank you, Pat. That's lovely. And that letter will be from that lass of mine down in London. I can't find me reading glasses anywhere. Would you tell me what she says, Pat? Certainly. Now, let's see. She says, Dear Mum, just a line to let you know... Speak up, please, Pat. I can't hear you. We'll all be able to come up to Greendale to see you for your birthday. Jim started school this week, and Dad's bought a new car. All well, and hoping you are too. All our love, Sally and family. Eee, that's good news. Thanks, Pat. Have a cup of tea. Thank you, Mrs Dryden. Oh. Ah. Just the thing, this cold weather. I'll be on my way before it starts snowing again. Goodbye. Bye, Pat. Pat's next stop was at Ted Glenn's workshop. Morning, Ted. Oh, 
Hello, Pat. Why, brr, it's cold outside. That's a grand stove you've got there. I could do with that in my van. Ooh, it's lovely. Here's somebody writing from a warm place. Australia. Yeah, it'll be Albert. It's ages since he's written. That reminds me. I found Bert's old skates this morning. I reckon they'll be just about your size, Pat. Do you fancy trying them out? They say the tarn's frozen hard. Well, I don't know. I'd love to have a go. Is the ice safe? Has anyone checked it? <laughs> yes, Miss Hubbard. Take them anyway. You never know when they might come in handy. And I've got some of my own. Thanks, Ted. Cheerio. blowing the snow into deeper and deeper drifts. Soon, Pat had to stop. The road was blocked. He thought he would never get through with his letters now. Then he looked across to the tarn and saw someone skating on the ice. It's worth trying, Jess. I can take a short cut across the ice. Come on, Pat, it's lovely! You stay here, Jess, and mind the van. I'll just put these skates on. Here we go. Whoa! Lee dee dee dum, yada dee 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 do. Hello, Pat. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> Special ice delivery today. Thank you. Good skating. George Lancaster was still on the ice. He did get a surprise when Pat whizzed by with a letter. Mrs. Thompson was out for a spin, too. Ouch! Hello, Pat. What are you doing down there? Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Look at Jess. Come on, Jess. That's enough skating for today. We'll get back on wheels. There were no children at the school. They were all snowed up at home. But the snowman was there.
Pat had an envelope in his pocket, so he addressed it to the snowman. Mr. Snowman, the drift, Greendale School, and tucked it under his arm. Hello, who's that? It was Miss Hubbard and Ted. Hello, Pat. Have you seen my bicycle? The snow must have buried it. We'll have to find it. You dig there, Ted. And you try here, Pat. Oh, where can it be? Who left this gate open? On with the search. Tut, tut, tut. Any luck, Ted? Found something? Hmm, just an old kettle. I think it's here. Just in time for choir practice. I'll be off now. I'll open the gate for you, Miss Hubbard. Thank you, Pat. Goodbye. Bye, Miss Hubbard. Nothing stops her, does it? See you in church on Sunday. I'm coming, Jess. Time to go home. Cheer up, Jess. This snow can't last forever. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Bom, 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 bom. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It was a windy day in Greendale. Hang on, Jess. 
It's a difficult job driving in this wind. Help! I can't see! Alf Thompson was nearly blown off his feet. Look out! <laughs> hmm. How are we going to get past this lot? Said Pat. Oh, hello, Jess. Hello, Pat. It was Peter Fogg on the other side. Hey, this wretched wind, he said. Blowing trees down all over the place. Don't worry, Pat. I'll soon shift it. I'll nip down the forestry place and borrow their machine. No wonder it blew over. It's rotten. Peter was soon back with the log lifter and a power saw. Now then, we'll soon cut our way through. Stand back, these things don't half go. I'll just get these branches out of the way, Peter. Now then, let's see if we can move the pieces. Phew, it's warm work.
Mm, should be able to get through there, said Pat. Then went for his van. But it had gone. Oh! Where could it be? There it was, safe and sound. It was just along the road, next to Sam's mobile shop. I moved your van down the road, said Sam. I could see your new paint was going to get scratched with all these branches flying about. Thanks, said Pat. It is smart, isn't it? Royal crown and all. Cheerio, Sam. Cheerio! Thanks, Peter. Cheerio! We'll have to get a move on now, Jess. Now what? Ouch! My hat! Come here. Oh, no. I'll never catch it now. It's that cable again. I'll soon fix that. There was nobody about at the village school. Have they all been blown away? The children were out enjoying the wind. But the wind wanted to deliver the letters. in all directions. The children helped to find them. One letter was stuck in a tree. Careful. It would be an airmail letter. What a day. Hold them tightly. I think they're all air letters today. Bill Thompson took them to the headmaster. And Pat waved goodbye.
Pat was blown about the valley all morning with his letters and parcels. It was almost the end of his windy round when he saw a flying towel. It was one of Granny Dryden's. He went to help her catch her washing. Oh, Pat, she said, this wind's terrible. You are a dear. I'd never have caught it all by myself. Look, there's more over there. Now we've got my washing, what about your hat? It blew off miles away and sailed down a stream. Good gracious, said Granny Dryden. Ted Glenn said he took a postman's hat out of the lake. I didn't see how it could be yours. Look, he popped it on the old scarecrow to dry. It looks like mine. It is mine. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Scarecrow. Time to blow home, said Pat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. There was a thick fog in Greendale. Pat had to go slowly along the winding lanes. Someone waved to him, but he couldn't make out who it was. Uh, good morning, he shouted. He was late when he reached the village post office. Good morning, Mrs. Goggins. Sorry I'm late. No need to hurry, said Mrs. Goggins. There's no sign of the letters yet. It'll be this nasty fog. Come and sit yourself down and have a nice cup of tea. Thank you. That'll be lovely after that foggy drive, said Pat. I'll just brew up. Ah, 
that's lovely. Pat was just getting warm and comfortable, and Mrs. Goggins was just bringing the tea and biscuits, when ping went the shop's doorbell. It's early for a customer, said Mrs. Goggins. That's a good cup of tea, said Pat. But Mrs. Goggins came in with the mailbag. It's here, she said. What, already? How did he get through so quickly? There's no fog down at Pencaster. It's only in Greendale. So he's not as late as we thought he'd be. Just as I'd picked my favorite biscuit. Oh, well, no time for that now. I'd better get on my way. Hold on, Mrs. Goggins. I'll give you a hand. He helped to sort the letters. Not too many today, thank goodness, with all this fog about. Goodbye. Oh, and thanks for the tea. Mind how you go. <laughs> it's as thick as ever out here. knew the Greendale roads well enough, but they looked different in the fog and his lights weren't much help. He must have taken a wrong turn somewhere, so he stopped by a signpost to find out where he was. Oh dear, it wasn't a signpost, only a crossroads sign. Now what? Pat didn't know which way to go. He walked along the lane, trying to see through the fog. I can't see a thing. Oh, I'd better not lose sight of the van. Hey, dear. Even my glasses are fogged up. Then he saw someone standing in the field. Why is he so still? It must be Ted Glenn out after rabbits. He'll know the way. I'll pop over with his letter and ask him. Pat walked up very quietly so as not to disturb the rabbits and touched Ted on the shoulder. Ted didn't move. Pat put the letter in Ted's pocket. He still didn't move. Pat gave him a nudge. Oh, it was a scarecrow. Pat did feel silly. He was glad no one saw him. <laughs> Sorry, scarecrow. The letter isn't for you. And I don't suppose you can tell me the way in this fog. Goodbye. He was just wondering what to do when he saw some lights coming through the fog. It was Alf Thompson on his tractor. Luckily, he wasn't lost. He soon showed Pat which way to go. Pat was on his way again. He saw Sam's mobile shop parked at the side of the road. Hello, Sam. <coughs> this fog gets in your throat, doesn't it? Have you got any cough sweets? Uh, these'll do the trick, said Sam. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. <coughs> Cheerio. The 
The next stop was at the church. Hello, Pat. Isn't this fog ghastly? said the Reverend Timms. Don't know how you found your way. What a day for choir practice. But I expect Miss Hubbard will come. <laughs> Nothing stops her. Thanks, Pat. Go carefully and trust in the Lord. Goodbye. Cheerio, Reverend. When Pat got back to his van, he saw that Jess had gone. Pat looked everywhere. Where could that cat be? Perhaps he'd gone looking for rabbits. Pat set out to seek Jess. He called and called. Jess! Jess, where are you? Jess! Come on, Jess! Hippos, push, push, push! Jess! Jess! Push, 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 push! Jess! Come on, Jess! Oh! Come on, Jess, this is no time for hide and seek. Oh! Push, 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 push. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Ooh. Where have you been, Jess? This is no time to wander off. Come on. Pat was lost again. Now you've done it, Jess. We're really lost this time. Let's try this way. He couldn't even find the road, let alone his van. Miss Hubbard passed the van on the way to the church. No Pat, and no Jess. What could have happened to them? <whistles> Hello, Vicar. Have you seen Pat? His van's in the road, but there's no sign of him or his cat. Oh, dear. Pat called quite some time ago. They must be lost in the fog. I know what we must do, said Miss Hubbard. We must ring the bells to guide them back to the church. Come along, Reverend. Paul. I wonder why the church bells are ringing. They don't usually ring for choir practice. Still, they're as good as a foghorn. We'll soon find the way now. There's Pat now. Hello, Reverend. Hello, Miss Hubbard. <laughs> it's a good thing you rang those bells. We were completely lost. Never mind, we're all right now. The Lord is our guide, said the Reverend. Come and have some tea. There's plenty in the pot. 
Thanks. Just what I need, said Pat. There was some milk for Jess. Look, said Miss Hubbard. It's much lighter outside. The sun was shining and a breeze had blown the fog away. Ah, that's much better, said Pat. Now I can get on with my letters. Come on, Jess. Cheerio. Farewell. Bye, Pat. It was lovely driving along in the sunshine <laughs> without getting lost. Look, Jess, <laughs> that scarecrow's still waiting for a letter. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Bum, 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 bum,